Hey, I want to welcome everybody watching online. If you're uh, tuning in from wherever you're tuning in from, we've got people that kind of watch from all over, which is kind of the beauty of technology. And uh, if you've been here the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about God's big backyard, and that just means there's a lot that's in God's kingdom. There's a lot in the galaxies. There's a lot in the cosmos. There's a lot under the ocean. You know, you go scuba diving or something, and you see things you've never seen before. And how many of y'all know they're still discovering things, that there's still things that they, they're, they're discovering new animals every, every year. They're like, man, we've found something we've never found before. There's about one and a half million that they've written down in books, but they estimate there's over eight million animals uh, different species of animals, but God put 120 in the Bible. So the question I always have is why? You know, why God put the, why, why put those 120 in there? Because I mean, you all know everything he does is on time, on purpose. He does it for a reason. And that his word, he says, it's sharp and that it, it, it accomplishes things. He says it brings correction, it brings reproof, it brings uh, encouragement, all those things. So there's different things. We've been looking at different animals in the scriptures about maybe why God used that. You know, the first week we started, and the Bible says that, that Noah sent out a dove and a raven and all that means is that each one of us we have a choice we can either follow the dove or we can follow the holy spirit or we can follow every other spirit we can either feed on dead things which is what Ava, we've all seen ravens eating on roadkill you know you can either feed on dead things or you can feed on life you can feed on the past or you can feed on the faithfulness the, uh, all of that in god and last week we looked at uh, god rides on donkeys that Jesus' preferred method of transportation was not the beauty of a giant, elegant horse. He always came lowly on a donkey. And that's just because God, Jesus looks for dependable people. He looks at people that, that, that'll go the long haul, that'll carry the heavy load to places that other people won't carry. Thank God for missionaries. They carry a load into places that other people just won't carry. And Jesus always looks for dependable people to carry his presence. And if you're not going to be dependable, reliable, trustworthy, or faithful, then you don't really have to worry about really carrying his places. He'll always be, be with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But how many of y'all know we're supposed to be carriers of some things? And God rides on dogs. Donkeys. This week we're going to talk about snakes. We're going to talk about serpents. And all throughout the scripture, uh, uh, we see there's snakes are very negative, that they're, that they're not a good connotation. And yet this one particular scripture, Jesus said, be wise as a serpent. I mean, I know there's a lot of other animals he could have picked. He could have said, hey, be smart like a monkey. I mean, I know he didn't say, be smart like a monkey. He said, in other words, there's something in a snake. But not only that, how many of y'all know that, that if we know that the enemy is always portrayed as a snake, you need to at least be as wise as your enemy. How many of y'all know if you want to beat a snake, you got to think like a snake? And the Bible says don't be ignorant of the devil's schemes, his traps, his temptations. If you're ignorant of them, then he always gets the upper hand. So sometimes being wise as a snake just means thinking like your enemy. And thinking and, and understanding his schemes, his plans, his traps. How many of y'all fell into his traps a hundred times? And you, and you know, you're like, dang it, he got me again, right? He's like, well, I mean, the, so, so Jesus shows us some things uh, that, that, that are obviously negative about snakes. But I want to look at the part of snakes that he says, hey, be like that. Because the way a snake hunts is unique to him. How many of y'all know a snake doesn't hunt like a tiger? Snake doesn't hunt like a dog. The way that a snake captures uh, its prey is unique to it. So uh, we're going to read some passages of Scripture. I'm actually going to get Ansley to, to help me. That's why there's two stools up here. And, and because uh, me and Ansley were just having a conversation this week, uh, as we sometimes do. I mean, I know as parents, you're always trying to talk to your teenager, but there's little doors. There are these tiny little doors that they make you look for because the door is not always open in a teenager. You know, sometimes you're like, how's your day? Good. That's all you get. That's all you may, that may be all you get for a week. But then there's other times that little door opens. It's like, and, you know, so we're ha having one of those moments, a good conversation. But she had mentioned, because uh, I was asking her how school's going and all that. Have you seen this? Blah, 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 blah. So I just started talking about snakes a little bit. And then she brought up the fact, she says, you know, a young lady in my uh, class leaned over to me this week and said, I want what you have. And she said, I love God, but I don't love him like you love him. I want what you have. And the way she responded to that, I thought, that's wise as a serpent. Because she could have responded a lot of different ways. A lot of different ways that she could have responded. But I liked her response. I said, I said you're, you're like a serpent. 
And so I want to talk about the, we have five characteristics of a snake. Come up, Anne, so you can uh, come up and we'll, uh, what side do you want? What side's your best side? Because girls care. You don't care. Oh, I think both of your sides are good, but I mean, I ain't, I'm not dumb. Now, I, every, every, every week we've been bringing live animals up here. It took me forever to get this snake, y'all. I went to every, I went to every stinking Misha's Pets, Petco, Pet everything. And, and I, but don't run out in the street. There's cars out there now. <laughs> that was my only hesitation. It's like, man. They may run out in the street, but hopefully somebody catch them. So it took me it took me a while to get get this 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 snake, and uh, I love y'all's attention right now. I feel like I have it. Like I feel like before this moment it was like eh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, but I feel like right now y'all are locked in. Like man, this is like, even my man on the back row. How old are you? Eight, nine years old? Yeah, I see you back there. He's like, man, it's about to get good up in here. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, somebody's going to jump up you. <laughs> like, somebody's about to catch the spirit. <laughs> so anyway, you know, so I finally went to this one pet store. He's like, I don't have anybody that can bring a snake to you. Like, I was trying to hire. I wanted to rent a snake. You know, they don't have rent a snake here in Lake Charles. <laughs> I was surprised. So uh, finally, I was, he was like, you're just going to have to buy one. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with it whenever I get it? Like, I was like, I thought, what if we raffled it off in kids and we sent it home with one of the kids? It was like, surprise, you won a big white python. Uh, and then I thought, well, we could raffle it off in church. And then the little pet store owner, he goes, you could, you could earn your money back from the snake. I was like, brother, I don't think anybody wants, wants a snake. So anyway, it took a while. But finally, against better judgment, I didn't go, go with him. So... Y'all ready? Look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. Look at this guy. Did y'all solid? Y'all was worried. Look, you, hey, ain't going to get you. Ain't going to get you. This is one snake you can hold. You ain't got to worry about. Listen, don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. Now, listen, I've been playing with this snake for the past three days because back in my day, there was Jake the Snake. And I don't know if you know Jake the Snake was. Jake Snake was a wrestler. And uh, he didn't wrestle. He wrestled. <laughs> Back then they wrestled, didn't they, Troy? <laughs> Listen, us Pentecostals, we watched some cartoons and some wrestling in the morning. Uh, so anyway, this is, this is our snake. And uh, we named him. What did we name him? Duke. Duke. <laughs> that's, that's right. We named, him. we named him Duke. All right. So enough, enough of that. That was fun. I, I know y'all are scared. Y'all are scared. That, that, was my, that was my dad joke to y'all. Tommy, will you grab this thing? Because I thought, man, what are we going to do with that after we show everybody our fake snake? I don't like snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy don't like snakes. I, I've, I've hunted with Tommy before. Uh, how many of y'all know most snakes you kill? Yeah, all y'all said amen. Huh? I actually I asked, asked a couple people in the church if they knew anybody that had a snake, and nobody knew anybody that had a snake. I used to have a snake whenever I got out of high school. I brought one home to my mother one time. That did not go over well, everybody. That did not go over well, and I kept him for three or four years, and uh, we had lots of adventures, me and that snake. But anyway, I don't want to get uh, stuck in the weeds, but... Uh, the, the, the context of where Jesus says, be wise as a serpent, he's, he's actually talking to them about going out into the world and reaching people. And he says, and we'll read it here in just a second, but he says, uh, I'm sending you out like a lamb amongst the wolves. And, and then he says, and if you'll be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, you'll basically be, you'll be effective and this is one of the last things, you know, Jesus is ending. He's got his disciples, and he says, I'm not going to be able to do this alone, so I'm going to have to send you out. And there's going to be times whenever you're going to feel like you're, you're, you're standing amongst wolves, that there's going to be times where you're going to feel intimidated, you're going to feel vulnerable. There's going to be times where he says you'll stand before kings, you'll stand and you'll be enchained, you'll be in prison. There's going to be times, and, and all of you have maybe experienced this, where you walked up into a conversation and everybody's doing things that, that kind of go against your morality or your spirituality or you as a Christian, and, and you have a choice. of You want to kind of shrink back, right? They're all, maybe, maybe they're standing around cussing, drinking, doing whatever they're doing, and that's just not your thing. Thing and you know, and, and you kind of feel like 
uh, I'm a lamb and they're a wolf. Or, or maybe you've, incurred, you've, you've encountered people that, that, are, that will lash out against you as a Christian. And you can feel like a lamb amongst wolves. But how many of y'all know Jesus said, I'm sending you? In other words, if I'm with you, you're more than a match. And you may feel intimidated and you may feel like that, 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 that you don't have what it takes. But how many of y'all know as long as the shepherd's there, you're going to be okay? Because the one thing I know about wolves is wolves don't like people. And, and if you've ever seen a, a, a herd of sheep standing around, uh, they may be, Meh, you know, they're kind of doing their thing. But then a wolf will come walking up. And how many of y'all know he comes in whistling and skipping? Right, he's he's ready. Right, you can see them, and all of a sudden, the little the lambs start skirting around like they're kind of like that. They get real nervous. You know, they kind of start talking to each other like, "You see this guy? Yeah, I see this guy. What are we gonna do about this guy?" Right, and there may be a whole pack of them. But how many y'all know if the shepherd stands up, the 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 wolves they they don't exist anymore. They scatter, baby. So how many y'all know? Even though there's times for us as Christians, we may feel like as long as the shepherd's there, you're gonna be okay. So he's telling his disciples, listen, I'm sending you out, and you're going to feel like a lamb amongst wolves. But if you'll be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, you'll fulfill your assignment or what I've called you to do. So uh, I brought Ansley into it just because I saw in her, she, and she had other experiences that she may want to get into just since school started with some of uh, these interactions that she's having with people. But God wants us to be wise. Blessings. God, that was a cough, sorry. Uh, God wants us to be wise. And if we'll walk in wisdom, then we'll be effective in, in reaching people. How many of you know the church has not always been that effective in this area? So I want to look at five characteristics of a stake. You want to start us off? Yeah. I know. You're going to you're gonna have to really like kick me or something or I won't shut up. <laughs> like you have to kick me and be like, shut up. Well, we can read the verse, uh, Matthew 10, 16 is what he was referring to. Um, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Um, and I actually liked, you guys missed it, but whenever we were reading this yesterday, you did a little a little skip about the wolf coming into the sheep. And yeah. it was really nice. I liked it. Yeah, she, she said, are you going to skip tomorrow? I said, I don't think so. But, but, but wolves do come in skipping. They come in whistling and happy, right, until the shepherd shows up, and then they scatter. So. But the serpent. Today we're talking about the serpent, and um, the Lord has given me, which I guess is why you brought me up here, ever since school started, and even outside of school, just presented me with opportunities. And it really is a blessing to see um, just how he's been able to use me. And I don't think I was necessarily like, noticing it I guess until I started to talk to you about it um but talking about it just this week has taught me a lot too and I hope that y'all get something out of today too amen all right so the first characteristic of a snake y'all know what it is and there's so many people in the bible that I think are are snaky in the best possible way and I, I woke up one of the one morning I don't remember maybe Wednesday morning and I got up pretty early just because I did, and as I went into our little study or whatever, I read the whole book of Esther, and I loved Esther. If you watch, if you watch the way she interacted in her moment, uh, how uh, the first one that, that we wrote down is is patience. That Esther's so patient in the way that she uh, interacted in her moment. In other words, she didn't. Or, or go ahead and uh, read James one nineteen. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to wrath. So we spent most of our time really just thinking about Esther and reading the book of Esther. Because if you know the story, the Bible says that she had a moment with the king. And there was a lot that that, that moment hinged upon. And she needed... Uh, wisdom in that moment and she only got one moment but the bible says in preparation for that moment she sat in oil for six months and when i mean sit in oil she didn't sit in a vat of oil but for six months 
they mixed oil and myrrh and would rub that into her skin. And then for another six months, there was other fragrances that were added to her. And then for another year, so before she ever had her moment, for, for two years, she prepared for that moment. And there's one thing that, that about snakes that, that, that you kind of know and understand. How many of y'all know they're patient? I read one, one thing that said that a snake will sit in a corner and will watch its prey for seven hours and never move anything but its eyes. How many of y'all that creeps you out? Yeah, I don't want to give any of y'all nightmares tonight. But that, that sometimes us as Christians, we feel like to be effective, we need to go in real fast. Or we need to go in and, 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 and man, we got we to gotta seize our moment. We got to go for it. But I love whenever you read Esther that just like a serpent, she watched the king, his nuances, what he liked, what he didn't like. She listened to the people around her, the people that were over her. And she spent that time just observing that she didn't move in. And one of the things I loved about Ansley, whenever the young lady said, uh, I, I want what you want. That, uh, how many of y'all know people watching us? That, that people see and they're observing. And how many of y'all know that to, to be wise as a serpent, that there's a need in us to be observant and to be watching? But then you brought up what real wisdom is, though. Yeah, um, real wisdom is knowing when to blend in and when to stand out. Part of real wisdom, at least. And I had mentioned to him that the Lord has kind of highlighted some people in school for me and even outside of school, but just I know where they are in their life and I kind of know some things that are going on and I know that right now is not my moment to act on that. And so for the past month, and I will continue to wait until he tells me not to, but I've just been really listening and building that relationship with them and just honing into like certain things of like, Lord, let me hear, let me hear what you want to hear behind what they're actually saying, like what that really means. And like, let me see things that other people don't see. And I think when it says slow to speak and um, quick to listen, it's also slow to act and quick to observe. So I'm not only listening to what they say, but I'm also watching to how they act and how they respond. And so there are some people that he's highlighted for me, and I know that my time will come whenever he'll present an opportunity to me to, to say something. I don't even know specifically like what they need yet, but I know that they need God, and they, they know that they need God too, even if that's not what they think they need. And so in this time, I feel like that's what I really thought about of like in this waiting period, there may be some people in y'all's lives where it's like, you know that they need the Lord, but right now where they're at, they wouldn't receive it because those people, I know that they won't receive it if I just like, am like, bam, like you're having problems and you need God. Like that's not how, so I'm waiting for the Lord to kind of me get to receive everything that I need to receive and interpret whatever I need to interpret and then act on that in the right moment whenever he tells me to, whenever he presents that opportunity, then I will just act on that moment. I, I, I remember years ago I went and visited missionaries. Whenever we were young and really broke, come I mean, y'all, you know, we don't, you know, we were live, living Section 8 housing, eating bologna sandwiches and stuff. I was waiting tables at Outback and I was such a catch for my wife. I mean, she really got a gym when she got me. I was cleaning job sites, and then I would go uh, sell blooming onions at Outback till close, everybody. Sell blooming onions till close. Uh, and then, but we like to travel, so we made a decision when we got married. Hey, let's not have kids for five years because they're expensive. Uh, let's take the money, that I, let's take our tips and, and go and, and travel. And then we would, we would be around some missionaries, and they would say, oh, you could come visit us. And we would be like, we would just call them up and be like, hey, you said we could come visit, and it was a free vacay, everybody. So we would go and visit them, but I remember visiting these missionaries, and I loved picking their brain because they had raised all of their girls on the mission field. They had three girls that had raised all of them, and they had been in hard places. They'd started churches in Russia and Poland. I asked them what's the hardest place, and they mentioned in Russia, they said that whenever we showed up in Russia for two years, we never preached the gospel. We never had a Bible study. We never said anything about Jesus for two years. 
for two years, we opened up a coffee shop and we just served. We made relationships with people. We made relationships with people in the apartment complex. They just, they just watched people, watched how they interacted, watched their emotions, just, just like a snake, baby. Jesus said, hey, I'm going to send you out there, but if you'll use wisdom, you, you'll, you'll be successful. And, and like she said, wisdom is knowing when to attack and when to blend in. So the second thing this is is if number one they're patient number two they're camouflage how many y'all know snakes don't just don't announce hey everybody i'm a snake how many y'all know usually you walk up on one and then you jump back a little bit right you have a moment your heart patters because they blend into their environment that they that they, they don't announce themselves so for these missionaries to take that time and just blend in but how many y'all know there are times where you don't have two years Whenever it's like, man, I've got, I've got today, the Apostle Paul, he had one moment in front of Caesar's, the only moment he was going to get. And he knew, he says, everything has brought me to this moment that God showed me in a vision. I would make it to the highest pinnacle. Nobody more powerful than Caesar. I must stand before Caesar. And when he stood before Caesar, he didn't wait. He didn't take two years. He took two seconds. And he told him, man, I was on my way to persecuting Christians. Nobody was a hater of Christianity more than me. But a light shone down from heaven and said, Paul, Paul, why did thou persecute me? It's hard for me to pick against the goats. And he says, who art thou, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And all of a sudden, the Apostle Paul's whole life was changed. And, and, and he, but he was waiting for the moment before Caesar. So wisdom is knowing when to blend in and when to stand out. Wisdom is knowing and listening to the Holy Spirit enough to know like is this my moment where I strike or is this the moment where I observe and sometimes again we think that in order for us to be the most effective we, 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 we go full bore all the time but uh, you know I believe Jesus would, would argue with that and say hey maybe that's not the, the best way or the best time to do it what's next number three everybody say patient everybody say camouflage yeah 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 blend in Snakes live ready. Once they're ready, they're ready. I mean, I know they live coiled for a reason, right? I mean, once that moment or that opportunity comes, then they're ready to strike. Read that. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all your long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will hear up for themselves teachers. And they will, return, they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you will be watchful in all things. Endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I love that. I love everybody has a ministry. I love everybody has an assignment as an evangelist. And part of that assignment, he says, hey, it's convincing people. How many of y'all know convincing can take time? How many of y'all ever tried to get your husband to buy you a new car? How many of y'all know it's going to take you a minute, right? You got to tell him all the reasons why. Like, but babe, but babe, but babe, think of all the things I can do with it, babe. I can. Go get the groceries, babe. You just come up. You're convincing. How many of y'all know it takes time to convince somebody? And then he goes on. He says, and there's times that you'll rebuke. And then there's times that you just exhort with all long suffering. How many of y'all thankful for patient people? People that just stick with you. People that just stick with you. Say, hey, I'm going I'm to walk with you through this. I'm going to stick with you through it. I care enough about you that I want you you know, for her to say, I know they need God, whether they know they need God or not, I know they need God. And if it takes me the whole school year to present the gospel to them in a wise way, in such a way that they can, they can eat it and digest it and it become fruitful to their life. I mean, I know time's going by anyway. You might as well invest it in people. You might as well go after, go after people. He says, and then teaching and, 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 and take the time uh, to teach them. So... I like, too, that it says be, re be ready in season and out of season. Um, the time to get ready for battle is not during battle. It's before right. battle. And Good. even we talked about Esther. She, It was two years 
before she got anointed queen. Then she soaked in oil and in the perfume and all that for one year. So it was really three years before she approached the king to save her people that she, you talk to me a lot about um, like eating out of that field. And so it was three years before she was getting ready for a battle that she didn't know she was going to have to fight. But because she did that preparation before, then whenever she went in, she had favor with the king. Well, and oil always represents the Holy Spirit. So when it says that she soaked in oil for six months, that just means she spent extended times in God's presence. How many of y'all know that's where wisdom comes from? Wisdom comes from God's presence. And if you don't spend time in God's presence, and in this case, it was so dire what they were going to. They were going to annihilate millions and millions of Jews. All the Jews in every province they were going to kill. The whole Jewish nationality they were going to wipe off the face of the earth in one moment. The decree had gone out. The Bible says she did not eat or drink for three days. Now, that's one thing not to eat for three days. It's another thing not to drink for three days. And she told everybody in the kingdom, she says, you tell everybody, nobody drinks anything for the next three days. We're either going to die of thirst or we're going to die by them. We're not going to die by either. We're going to seek the Lord. And so all of these times of being in God's presence allowed the wisdom of God to flow from heaven down to her and gave her a strategy to win. How many of y'all know that's wise as a serpent, that that's that's taken? Taking that time, those moments. So I love, you know, anytime, listen, listen, listen. Any moment you spend in God's presence, expect his wisdom. Come on, he, he, he's, I mean, I know he's quite intelligent. He, and, and it's a gift. Come on, James said, if any man lacks wisdom, ask God. And he will give it without reproach. And come on, reproach is so, because, because he doesn't stand there and say, I told you you'd need it, stupid. No, 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 reproach means I'll give it freely, happily, willingly, and I'll never hold it over your head how ignorant you are, even though I know you're dumb as dirt. (laughs) You're dumb as dirt. He says, I know your frame. I know you came from dirt, baby. Outside of my breath that was breathed into you and you became a speaking spirit, outside of that, you're a frail, fragile human but, so I'll give you as much wisdom as you need, and I won't hold it over your head. I'll give it to you without reproach. But for us to take that time in God's presence and say, God, I need wisdom. I'm a terrible husband without you. I'm a terrible parent without you. I'm a terrible employer without you. Like Without you, I'm nothing. God, give me that wisdom. And if you look at Solomon in the Old Testament, we all know what he asked God for. He said, God, give me wisdom to lead your people well. And the Bible says God got so tickled that he asked for wisdom. He says, man, not only am I going to make you wise, I'll give you the next of your enemy. I'll give you riches and honor. You'll be the wisest person that ever lived. I mean, I know God's not opposed to giving wisdom. Wisdom. But you'll never have wisdom without asking for it, and you get it from God's presence. So for her to take those six months just soaking in God's presence, she's taken in the wisdom of God. God, show me how to navigate this. God, show me how to get, the, get, get my family out of this situation. God, show me the, where's deliverance lie in this. And God showed her exactly what to do. But you have to soak in it and, and take that time and be ready when it happens. Next. Uh, Am I talking too much? No, you're good. You're probably just like, no, I why make, am I even here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make clear, too, um, there was a point a few weeks ago that I just, like, really decided, like, to just, like, kind of double down in, like, my time with the Lord. And so I kind of just, like, stopped doing some of the things that, like, I'd normally been doing, just, like, hanging out with friends and just decided to come to the church. And so... I think at that point, too, I had started getting, like, like whenever I really just, like, like, I would come to the church every night, and in class, like, I have a lot of free periods, so I just listen to worship music, and I just listen to sermons and all that. And During so, class, like, how do you even pull that off? Like, I don't, I know, that's what I do, Mandy, I'm like, she's like, yeah, I, I watch, in in I back. watch, like, three <laughs> hours of preaching at class today, and I'm like, how, what, what are your teachers doing, like? No offense, but it's like, goodness gracious. Like. Okay, anyways. <laughs> but my mom was smart enough. She says, well, you know, she could be watching worse things. And I was like, 
Point taken. Thank you, Mimi. Wherever point, you are. Point, point, point Mimi taken. Mimi's on my back. Anyways, <laughs> right. so I really noticed at that point whenever I had, or I guess now I'm noticing, now the Lord's bringing it to me, of like that's when I started getting a lot of questions at school of like why are you like, why are you acting like this? Why are you doing this? Like I want this in you. And it's not because, and I told this girl that asked me, I had always wanted to like, I guess, like, I've been praying, like, Lord, put this desire in me for you, like, more to where I can't, like, I can't do anything else. Because I remember even in class, I was telling her, like, I really want to watch this movie, but I don't want to watch this movie. I want to watch this sermon. And, like, I want, like, I've been wanting to watch this movie for so long, but, like, I can't turn this off. Like, I don't know why. Anyways, so I really noticed after I'd gotten into the presence of the Lord more is when the questions started to come and when those opportunities started to come up more. So it's nothing that I did because of me or it's not because I'm so wise or anything like that, but it's because I spent my time with the Lord and then he is, whenever I'm in here by myself for hours, he's engraving these things in me. And even you told me when we were talking about this of like, I told you whenever people ask me things, I don't even think about, well, it sounds like bad to say, I don't even think about my response, but it's just like natural that I always point it back to the Lord. And he says that that's the Holy Spirit in me processing those just in those milliseconds before I answer the questions, that's the Holy Spirit in me. What was being implanted while I was in here every night of the week for hours on end, listening to different things, worshiping, praying, just like doing these these extra things, really, because I'm, I'm good with the Lord, but I just need him more and I want him more because I prayed for that desire. But also, like, it is nothing that in me, there's nothing in me that's wise because like me just me I'm pretty dumb like all the rest of us but like the Lord is giving me these responses that just point directly back to him and like whenever you spend that time in his presence it feels like like there's no other answer for me it would be stupid to answer any other way than the Lord it would be ignorant of me to to not point it back to him and so it just feels like like just my automatic response. And that's what happens whenever you spend that time in his presence is he gives you the wisdom in that in those moments. And it's not till after that I realized that was the wisdom of the Lord. That was not sparks for me. That wasn't just like, oh, it's just how I grew up. No, that was those hours that I spent in the Lord's presence. In the oil. In the oil. That's good. Uh, all right, last one. Are we on the last one? No, we have two more. All right, go. Uh, snakes are not intimidated by size. I love that. Give me the, put that picture up there. I mean, y'all know snake will eat things so much bigger than itself. I mean, y'all that that's you at Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> that's you. That's you at the casino. And you got the 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 free the free buffet because you lost a bunch at the slots. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A snake. They said that his mouth will go five times larger than the width of his. Of, of him and, and, and all that means is whenever God said hey you're going to seem at times that you're intimidated I love that Dan, how many of y'all know David was not intimidated by Goliath everybody else was everybody else was intimidated by how big he was and David just knew his covenant David had spent enough time in the word he had spent enough time in God's presence that it never dawned on him he didn't care Goliath could have been a million feet tall he knew greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world I have a covenant he's an uncircumcised Philistine I have a covenant with God and and he ran at that giant and how many of y'all know uh, uh, Jesus whenever he's talking about hey you're going to feel intimidated but if I'm sending you you're going to be okay and snakes if if and, and you can go down deep dives looking at a lot of uh, TikToks on, uh, on, on YouTube on snakes eating big things. You know, that's, that's a snake eating a whitetail. I mean, I know a whitetail, uh, a deer, is a lot bigger uh, than a snake. And yet a snake looks at that and says, I can take that. And for the Apostle Paul to stand before Caesar, he says, I'm not intimidated by Caesar. This is my moment. For, for David to, to stand there and say, I'm not intimidated. This is, this, is my, this is my moment. And all throughout Scripture, you see Moses standing before Pharaoh, the most, most powerful person on the planet. And he said, God said, let my people go. 
God said, let my people go. Now, he started out shrieking back, right? Whenever God ministered to him at the burning bush, he says, I stutter. I can't, I can't even talk without stuttering. I can't stand before Pharaoh. Like, I, I can't even articulate well. God said, but I'll be with you. I, I'm going with you. So, so the wisdom and, and all of this, none of it has to do with talent, It all has to do with dependence upon him, his word, and his spirit. And and if you, uh, we'll we'll go to the next one. I could could spend all day talking about this stuff. Listen, I've been studying snakes for the past seven days. Y'all just got here. So, I mean, I'm full of fun snake facts that uh, I could just spend all day uh, talking about these things. But so we'll just go to the last one. Uh, the last you want to give me any fun snake facts? <laughs> no. I don't have them like you do. <laughs> All right. Uh, the last one is don't be poisonous. Matthew twelve thirty three says either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I love this. And if you read this passage, there are some very religious people that were judging Jesus on his love of unreligious people. In fact, read this here in Matthew chapter 9. This is the last verse we'll read. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Come on. Sick people do. That's what I'm talking about. Get then on, he Jesus. Added, <laughs> Get then on he Jesus. added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want just you stop, just to- stop. I love Jesus. It's like, don't you think you're so smart? You don't know nothing. Go learn the meaning of your scripture, not just your scripture. Well, I like that. It's just like... Sorry. I, get I want excited. you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, mm. but those who know they are sinners. Good. And then he calls them a brood of vipers. And the last point is, is that snakes don't attack people. I mean, I know if a snake came in here right now, you would run, but it would too. In other words, you never see snakes seeking just to bite to bite. Snakes don't go around looking to bite to bite unless they're poisonous. And that's why Jesus called them vipers. It's because there are some snakes that are way more aggressive than others. There are some snakes that carry poison and and, and others don't. And for him to call them a brood of vipers, he says, you you carry a poison in you. And you you act religious and you look like you're, you're a real holy person. But he actually says, you're a brood of vipers and that that you're poisonous. Uh, Snakes' teeth, they don't even grow forward. They grow backwards. In in, in other words, sometimes we as Christians, you know, we turn our teeth around and and we just bite people just because we want to bite them. How many of y'all seen this happen on the internet all the time? But how many of y'all know the teeth that are turned backwards? In other words, Jesus said, hey, you need to point those teeth at your direction. That you need to you need to you need to aim them at you first instead of trying to turn them around and bite individuals. And sometimes I like yesterday you had mentioned that people misrepresent Jesus. In other words, they they act religious and they act like they're bringing the good news of the gospel, but the way that they carry it is, or the way that they present it is is a lot of times it's within good intentions. It's just not wise. And to have wisdom as a serpent is to take on the form of a serpent and to be patient and to blend in at times. And, and, and when your opportunity comes, to be ready and, 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 to, and to go for it. But, 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 but there's also times whenever uh, we just need to keep our mouth shut and, and maybe wait a little while before we just start uh, uh, attacking people. Because that's not what snakes do. Snakes don't go around attacking people. So how many of y'all know you got to do what Michael Jackson said? Y'all know what Michael Jackson said? Start with the man in the mirror. Ask him to change his ways. 
If you want to make the world a brighter place, take a look at yourself. Make a change. It's Michael Jackson 1-1 one, one right there. Y'all don't know about that. Just kidding. Y'all don't get mad at me. If you can't have, it church, have fun at church, you're going to hate heaven. Y'all are going to be so disappointed. You're going to be like, I thought it was going to be so much more solemn. I thought it was going to be quiet. And all organs. People are happy. This is terrible. Yeah. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> this is what dinner looks like at our house, y'all. This is what lunch yesterday looks <laughs> like. Um, that was good. We had it fun. Was, it was so good. <laughs> But, yes, like you said, you can misrepresent Jesus. We had kind of talked about that of, like, wisdom is knowing when to stand out and when to stay back. But it's also knowing how to stand out. Because if you don't be wise in the way that you stand out, then you're doing it wrong, right? And he's told me before the, the, wrong, the right thing at the wrong time is the wrong thing. And I kind of, like, kind of interchanged those of, like, you can have the right moment, but if you do it in the wrong way, you turn it into the wrong moment. So that's where that's wisdom good. really comes in. It's like wisdom is knowing when that moment is, but then you still have to use wisdom in how you're going to proceed in that moment. Because then if you don't, you will misrepresent Jesus. Therefore, that really is using the Lord's name in vain. Because if you are that's saying good. or really just using him as an excuse, you have to watch that too of like, well, the Lord told me not to go to, to school today. And then my teacher is going to be like, Easily. that ain't the Lord. Yeah. Like my teacher is going to be like, well, like the Lord's telling you not to honor your commitment that you have to finishing school. And so like, then that's where the church hurt can come in. And that's where the, the using the Lord's name in vain. Cause really, you know, we don't always think of using his name in vain that way. Right. But that is using his name in vain and, and misinterpreting that. So you have to be wise, not only in, deciding when but deciding how it's good all right the land the plane i could stay here all day i like these people Me too. but we got a whole other group they're coming in a few minutes so but i want to end just just with this thought or this verse and i'll read it now, this is in matthew chapter 9 verse number 35 it says when jesus saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were confused. How many y'all know this is still this is as true today as it's ever been in history? That Jesus looks over the banisters of heaven and he just sees a bunch of people that are confused. Now we've moved into confusion on some of the most elementary, fundamental things. Total confusion on what bathroom to use. Just absolute confusion over the most basic of things and it says that they're helpless they're like sheep without a shepherd but he said to his disciples the harvest is great but the workers are few pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his field so the whole point of today listen the reason why we're talking about this is because this is a commandment of Jesus, that Jesus is still sending out his disciples. He still needs help. He still needs laborers. He still needs workers. He's just saying, hey, do it with wisdom. Spend enough time in my presence, in my word, that you're not just attacking people, that you're taking the time to listen to people. Be slow to speak, quick to hear, listen to them. Where are they at in their life? Where are they at in their marriage? Where are they at in their spiritual maturity? Because if you just start dumping 19 scriptures on them and they don't, they, they're not born again, you'll do more harm than good. Slow down. Be patient. There's a time to blend in and then there's a time to stand out. There's a time. I mean, I know sometimes snakes, that not with force, but they'll just find a way in. And you'll stumble upon them and say, how'd you get in here? The door shut. But a snake can find a way in. He's looking without violence. How can I get in there? How can I get in? So Jesus says, listen, look, look for cracks. Look for opportunities. And you don't have to, to, to beat the door down. I'll show it to you. 
Spend enough time soaking in my presence and in the word. And listen, I understand. A lot of you are like, man, I, I barely made it to church today. I work seven twelves. I'm in the middle of a turnaround. I'm not in a season where I can soak in God's presence. Yeah, but you are in a season when on your commute to work, you can say, God, give me wisdom. God, you know that I'm working seven twelves. I'm in the middle of a turnaround. God, you know that I'm in the middle of finals. God, you know that I got two under two at home. God, you know that I'm dealing with term, terminal d- diseases. God knows exactly where you are, but you're still never to a point where you can't say, God, at least give me wisdom. God, you said that if I ask you for it, you would give it to me without reproach. You wouldn't hold it over my head. God, I, I'm having a hard time navigating this situation. God, help. Give me wisdom. So, yeah, you may not be in a season where Ansley, you know, get off school and she can come to church for a couple hours. There's not many people that, that are in that season of their life. But I think the point is, is that you can still do what Jesus said and just say, hey, I'm sending you out. You're a sent one. Be an evangelist. You say, I'm not an evangelist. He says, you have a ministry. Fulfill it. You have people in your life that are sitting next to you that are looking over to see what you're looking at. And whenever they look over and they see the way that you're living, it should have them stirring up conversations. And you're incognito, baby. You're just blending in. You're not coming in blowing a trumpet, thumping a Bible. You're just doing what you do, and yet they're watching, and they say, I see what you have, and I love God, but I don't love him like that. Tell me what to do. Oh, you know what? I didn't always love God like this, but I just started asking him for his desires, and I started desiring him more. Just ask God to give you his desires. Just little things, wise as a serpent, can turn people, turn their whole life, turn everything around. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you for times of refreshing that come through your presence. God, we thank you for times at your house. God, that through praise and worship, you come in, you minister to us, you wash us, you rebuke us, you exhort us, you love us, you father us, you shepherd us. But God, also through your word, God, that you encourage us, you correct us, you show us how to be more effective in every area of our life. God, we see the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians. He got down on his knees and he said, I'm praying for a spirit of wisdom. That wisdom is a spirit. It's not something you get from a book. It's not something you get from a class. That there is a spirit of wisdom that only you can give. And you said that you'll give it freely. That you'll give it freely. That you're actually thrilled whenever we ask for your help in our life. That all the wisdom of God is, is the thought of God, the help of God, the leading of God. And you said it's the number one need for us. In the book of Proverbs, you said that wisdom cries out in the streets, begging people to come to her and receive from her God we drink from a lot of fountains we draw water from a lot of wells but God we need your well God we need your wisdom how to navigate politics how to navigate culture how to navigate reaching people have an influence God teach us how to not just bite people but to capture them With your goodness, your grace, your love and kindness, your tender mercy, and your long suffering. God, we thank you for it. Everybody say, Give me wisdom. 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 God, that you're good. You're good. You're good. Come on, just the same way, you know, Lord just showed me a picture. Just, you know, sometimes your phone needs an update. Plug it in. It says, hey, you need an update. Do you want it? Do you want? God, that there's things that we need to get off of our hard drive, get on our hard drive when we plug into your presence. You can clean some things up. You can bring in just what we need. Come on, some of you feel like, man, I have nothing. I'm just, these last six months, navigating, been incredibly difficult. God said, if you'll lower yourself in humility 
and ask. Earnestly ask. Be desperate for it. God, I have to have it. I have to have your wisdom in this area of my life. Esther got so desperate, she said, I won't drink. I have to have, there has to be a change in my life. God, we thank you for your presence. If you're here and you need prayer for anything, no matter what it is, maybe you're here and you just say, man, I just need the wisdom of God on this subject, on this situation in my life. I need the wisdom of God love to pray with you and pray for you. If that's you, I'm asking you to raise your hand right where you are. Just say, man, I need the wisdom of God. Lord, I need the wisdom of God. Come on, so much of it, I just feel like, you know, at times it has to do with relationships. I need wisdom. When to stand out, when to blend in, when to be slow to speak. God, I thank you for every person. If you're here, you're not born again. If you're here, you're not saved. You don't know the Lord. You feel like uh, you don't know. You say, I don't know if I have heaven in my heart. I don't know if uh, eternity is my home. I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I want to make sure that there's every person in here, man, that you have eternal life, that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Please don't leave this room. What a casualty to sit in the presence of the creator of everything. Leave that presence without knowing him when he wants desperately to know you. If you're here, that's you. You say, I don't know the Lord. I don't, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. I'd love to pray with you and pray for you. Not going to embarrass you, but I want to make sure every person has eternal life. There is no wisdom without Jesus. You have to have Jesus. Praise God. Everybody stand up on your feet. I believe God's oh, downloading wisdom upon uh, us, as a, us as a church. I believe the body of Christ needs the wisdom of God. And if we'll ask for it, how I many of y'all believe he'll give it, man? He says, I'll give it liberally. For those of you that raised your hand, be looking for it, you know. And it may not come suddenly, you know. Ansley just kind of noticed, she knows, like, hey, I, I noticed that there's been a shift that that, that the Lord's downloading things on me and I can speak and things are coming out that I know didn't come from me because I've taken the time to ask and I've taken the time to be in His presence. There's things coming out of me that I know are not from my own intelligence that they're by the Spirit. So I'd say be looking for those things. I mean, that's the wisdom of God. God's helping me in this situation. Be slow to speak. Be quick to hear. And slow to angry. Don't get angry. Don't fly off the handle. Don't bite people. Be slow to anger. Let's make a confession of faith. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, you are my wisdom. I have the mind of Christ. You said, he that wins souls is wise. I declare the wisdom of God is downloading upon my spirit. Your spirit talks to my spirit. And I thank you for the wisdom of God for my life and to reach people in Jesus' name. I'm going to bless you before you go. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you. May the wisdom of God envelop you and fill you this week in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. amen.